Greetings, One Boy Bahati here, One Boy Made It. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating how to do the chain stitch cast on. I know, I know, I know, I said the next video I did was going to be a video in which I was going to be showing how to loom knit placemats, coasters, and even mug rugs. And that video is coming. In fact, I made that video and it was so full of different elements and different things that I had never covered on this channel before that I felt like I needed to break it down in little bits rather than throw everything because there were new things. I didn't want everything thrown together in that one video. And so that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take an element from that video and at least present it on this channel, the chain stitch cast on, which maybe many of you know, but I've never talked about it on this channel and I feel like I'll, I will be introducing it to a lot of the beginners on this channel. So I just wanted to take it away from being this massive video and break the pieces down before we get to our placemats and coasters and mug rugs. So you know what? Let's just get to it. Now I'm going to show you the ends of this placemat so that you get an idea of why I want to do the chain stitch cast on. Now on this channel, we have really only dealt with two stitches. God love us. Two stitches, the E-wrap stitch and the loom knit pearl stitch. Usually though, when I cast off, I cast off with a cast a chain stitch cast off but every time i have cast on i have cast on with the e-wrap stitch now if you look closely here this side right here was the side i cast on this side right here is the e-wrap cast on and this side right here is the chain stitch cast off so what i'm going to demonstrate tonight is in case, in my opinion, is it looks close enough, it looks good. Um, I, I like it like it is. However, what I'm gonna show you tonight, if you choose and you want to have your ends absolutely match instead of very closely matching, then we're gonna cast on with the chain stitch. And so we'll have the chain stitch on both ends of our work. So. I'm gonna show you the chain stitch. And so besides yarn and our loom, we're going to need a crochet needle. There are loom knitters who are able to do the chain stitch cast on with their fingers. I am not one of them. I need a crochet hook. So this is how we do the chain stitch cast on. We're gonna start with a loop and we've made a loop. We're gonna find the first peg. When doing the chain stitch cast on, the anchor peg is not an option. You want to put your loop when you're doing the chain stitch cast on or on the peg of the first peg that you're going to work. You're gonna have your tail yarn and you're gonna Put that in the center and try to keep it out of the way. You may end up holding it at it for in the beginning uh, to get started, but you want that working yarn in front of the loom and understand that we're gonna be working for the cast on, we're gonna be working on the inside, which is different from uh, the way we've been working. Usually we're working on the outside of the loom and we're dealing with the grooves and things over here. But for the chain stitch cast on, we're gonna be working on the inside of the loom. Okay, so we're gonna take our crochet hook and we're going to put it between the next peg that we're going to be working or the direction that we wanna go in. 
For instance, I want to go this way. I want to work this way. So I want my crochet hook between these two pegs. If I was going this way, I'd put my crochet hook between, you want it between the first and the second peg. That would be my second peg if I was going that way. I'm going this way. So I'm going to put my crochet hook between the next two pegs. But not only that, not only am I going to put my crochet hook between these two pegs, I'm going to put my crochet hook in the loop on this side. So here's the loop. I'm going to put my crochet hook in the loop. So what we have now is we have a loop on a peg, the first peg that we're going to work, and we have our crochet hook inside, literally inside the loop. I'm going to come in a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing just a little better. Okay, so we have the loop and my crochet hook is literally inside that loop between the pegs of the direction that I want to go in. So kind of want the first um, pull, the first hoop, getting that first stitch through is usually the most difficult for me. Once I get that first one in, then it's usually everything gets a little easier. As you go, there are probably going to be times when your crochet hook is going to come out and you'll, you may see that as I go along here. But once you get that first one, so we got our hook and I'm holding the working yarn on, underneath here to give it a little tension. The work, um, the tail yarn underneath. I got the working yarn out here. Going to wrap the working yarn just around the needle, my hook enough so that when I pull it in, it's going to come in. And the idea is to pull it through that loop that was on that first peg. And now I have created a new loop. Okay, I'm going to do that one more time and then we will go on. All right, so we have, okay, so we have a loop, we make a loop and we're gonna put the loop on the first peg that we want to work. And now we're gonna put the working yarn in front. We're gonna put the tail yarn inside and in the back. We're gonna tighten it just a little bit, but not too much because we wanna be able to get our crochet hook in there. So I'm going this way. So I want my crochet hook between these two pegs. And not only that, but I'm going to put it inside the loop. Okay, so holding back that working yarn, I'm going to find a way to get this hook to bring in that working yarn and bring it through that loop. And now I've created another loop. And now once I have that other loop, I'm going to go between these two um, pegs right here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to wrap it in a way so that it'll bring that working yarn in. And then I'm just going to go between the next two. And I'm just going to keep doing that, pulling that working yarn in, creating a new loop. And then pulling that working yarn in, going to the next two loops, and then wrapping and pulling that working yarn in and going into the new, between the new pegs. There may be a time when you drop the, the loop or the loop may jump, jump out, but the good news is it's not like it's gonna unravel or anything. You just pick it up, put it back on the crochet hook and, and start, pick up where you left off. And so, we're going to keep going here with a loop, go to the next, between the next two pegs and wrap it just enough to get that working yarn between and you create a new loop and then you're going to keep going like this and you may have to go slowly at first as I still do and you're just going to keep going. And it really does, it's going to pay off in the end because your beginning and your ending are going to be 
so much more neater if you can do this. And then, like I said, we're going to do a chain stitch cast off. So the beginning and the end of the project are gonna match perfectly. All right, so I wanna do 30, I wanna cast on 30 pegs with this um, cast on. All right, so I don't know where I am. I'm gonna have to stop and count. Let's see. I don't think I'm there yet. <laughs> I want 30. And just keep going between the next two and wrapping and pull that yarn in. Pull the yarn in. Sometimes if it keeps sliding out, I have found this because my crochet needle is not the right size that I need. Okay, so that one, see how that one dropped? But um, you just go back and pick up a, the loop, a loop, and then you just can pick up where you left off. So, okay, so there you go. And so, and so. All right, and so I'm just gonna keep doing this until I have done 30 pegs. 10th peg, I'm going to take the loop that's here and I'm gonna put this final loop on that peg. This is my 30th peg. I'm gonna take this loop and put it on that peg. So I'm gonna actually put the peg Okay, I want, I like to bring the working yarn back then, and then I put that on that peg right there. Wow, okay, I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit. Well, I think we're good. Okay, so that you can see, look at how neat that looks. So that's our, let me bring it back up just a little so you can appreciate. So there's our cast on, and that's how neat it looks. Let me show you from this side, okay? So that's our chain stitch cast on. All right, and now we're ready to proceed with our first row. Now, if you are good or you wanna just stick with the E-wrap cast on for now, that is okay too. Because you saw there really wasn't that much, much difference, but this just makes sure that the beginning and the end is totally exact with the same type of stitches. Okay.
Thank you for watching. If you feel that you would like for me to break it down even further, let me know. Questions and comments are always welcome.